Now, uh, I think all you guys here are sort of like, um, this man essentially needs no introduction, but I've written one anyway. <laughs> so, hands up who likes films. <laughs> Keep your hands up if you consider yourself someone who knows about films. Most of you. Now put your hands down, because tonight we have a man, our guest of honor, our curator for Dentics and Fellow, who knows more of all of you bitches. <laughs> now I need this man a walk-in encyclopedia of film. He's one of my fab directors, and he's also one of the nicest guys in the industry. So I thought, um, and uh, I can honestly say, like, Joe is, like, partially responsible for me when to be a director, and when I was, uh, I didn't even know, about 10 or 11, I think he was probably the first director that I could establish was an auteur, and I could see his trademark and his sensibility and his running jokes between films. And uh, Joe, is, uh, Joe is too modest to blow his own trumpet, so I would like to blow a very long <laughs> blast on his trumpet. <laughs> Forgive the phrasing there. Okay, so I, I think we ought to get some, let's get some, let's get some kind of applause going here. I want this to be like a clap top. It's going to be like when people die at the Oscars. It's like a rolling kind of applause to go with this. Yes. We're going to go in reverse order as well. So going back, let's hear it first for Joe's masterful Masters of Horror episodes, such as uh, The Screwfly Solution and The Much Lord in Homecoming. His HBO TV movie, The Second Civil War. Let's hear it for his TV work, including Amazing Stories, one of them, Harry Indiana, and The Astounding Police Squad. with the, the film breaking down bit and not yeah. the, the VHS one which I don't like as much. I like the film one better. So that'll be back in Gremlins to the new batch. Okay, let's hear it for Joe's segment in Amazon Women on the Moon. <laughs> Bullshit or not. Let's hear it. Let's keep it going. Let's hear it for Inner Space. Let's hear it for the much underrated Explorer. <laughs> the scariest thing ever committed to film. <laughs> Let's hear it for the motherfucking howling. <laughs> Let's hear it for Joe Dante, the co-writer of Rock and Roll High School. <laughs> Let's hear it for Joe Dante, the director and writer of Piranha. <laughs> we shared on Saturday. And, am I right about the writing or not? No, I'm not. Okay, the director. <laughs> and then also, let's hear it for uh, the co-director of Hollywood Boulevard, showing on Friday. Got, uh, even better than that. Before Joe started directing, as you probably all know, he worked for Roger Corman's New World Pictures and edited the trailers. And these are some of the trailers he edited. <laughs> Amacord, Story of Adele Age, St. Jack, Candy Strike Nurses, Annual Hold Bag, The Big Bust Out, Dirty Ducks, Three Girls, Cannonball, Jackson County Jail, God Told Me To, The Bees, Star Crash, Big Bad Mama, Cover Girl Models, Student Teachers, Cockfighter, Caged Heat, TNT Jackson, and Death Race 2000. And last one, I don't think this season ends with Joe's legendary movie orgy, which I'm sure he'll tell you about at some point. So now, please, be upstanding. Come on. Get out of those uncomfortable seats. Uh, thank you for coming, and um, this is actually more people than saw my last picture. <laughs> The, uh, I, I, I'm following in Howell's footsteps here because, you know, uh, Edgar sort of 
was the groundbreaker because he did the right stuff, which is a, a great series, which was very successful and led to Eli Roth's Grapes of Roth. And now the equally hilariously titled Dante's Inferno. But you know, it's, it's just not that easy to find jokes about the name Dante. The joke, Roth, right? It's a lot easier. They're real words. You know? um, anyway, th this series is, um, it's not all my, it's not my favorite movies. All my favorite movies this is the only movies I like. Uh, these are movies that, um, uh, when, they, when they asked me to do a series, I thought, well, I'd like to do some things that I thought maybe people hadn't uh, seen recently, or certainly hadn't seen on a big screen. Um, and uh, some of the prints I actually had already, so I said, well, I can run those because I never get a chance to run them. And, um, and others are, uh, I, there's some pictures I really would have liked to run, but I couldn't uh, find. Maybe there were some others that I, like Confessions of the Opium Meter, which is one of my favorite movies. And I tried to put it on the schedule, and we found that um, Warner Brothers doesn't own it anymore and doesn't know who does. So uh, you can't legally run it unless, you, and it's not PD, so you can't legally run it unless you can find out who owns it. So maybe on the, on the next trip. Um, but I, we have a, 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 an eclectic group of pictures, and uh, of course they're not just movies. We, we of course, you know, I, I like trailers. I, I started doing trailers for Roger Corman, and I've always loved them. And so there's a lot of trailers, also, and uh, some of them are for old favorites and, and pictures we love. And uh, but I guarantee you, there are some trailers here for pictures that you have never heard of, <laughs> did not know existed, and are are pretty bizarre. Um, all right, we have a double bill tonight. Um, Zulu is, is a pretty long picture. Uh, it probably won't start till 9.30. Um, and I'll talk about that just before it comes on. But uh, we're beginning with Mondo Kani. And if you weren't uh, around in 1963 when this picture was released in America, you really can't imagine the huge impact that it had. This was a, it was a different world. We didn't know as much about other countries. And what we did, we learned from you know, Walt Disney's show, and so we, we, we didn't really have a line on what was going on that was unusual. Uh, there had been a picture called World by Night that was made by the Italians in, about two years earlier, and it was a globe-hopping kind of travelogue movie with a little bit of a hint of some of the stuff that's in Mondo Kani, but uh, it was very, very popular. Warner Brothers bought it here and chopped it up and made it a second feature, but it, it made a lot of money overseas. And um, so the makers of Mondo Kani, which means God's World, um, decided to do a shockumentary. It was the first um, one ever. Uh, and it's almost all real footage. The later imitations relied heavily on stock footage, but th this picture was really quite well made, and, and it's got a great score, which I think was nominated for an Academy Award. It was one of the reasons the picture was such a hit. Um, but uh, it spawned a gigantic uh, number of imitations all over the world, and Mondo movies, they were called. And um, I, I, made, I made a list of some of the titles of, of Mondo pictures that followed Mondo Kani. Uh, Mondo Pazzo was the actual sequel to Mondo Kani, which used all the footage they couldn't cram into Mondo Kani. Uh, Mondo Bolordo, Mondo Sadismo, Mondo Inferno, Mondo Nudo, Mondo Macabro, Mondo Sexualis, Mondo Tino, Mondo Mod, Mondo Erotico, Mondo Exotico, Mondo Hollywood, Mondo Keyhole, Mondo Bondo, Mondo Topless, Mondo Trasho, Mondo Cannibal, Mondo Freudo, Mondo Weirdo, Mondo Condo, and my favorite, Mondo Biondo. Now, there, in addition to these pictures, there are a whole lot of other movies uh, of, of this type with titles like Taboos of the World, and Echo, and Sweet in Heaven and Hell, Women of the World, Africa Adio, and, and a, a particularly astounding uh, film called Adio Uncle Tom, <laughs> which it, these, these, this set is available on a Blue Underground um, DVD set. And uh, you might imagine that Adio Uncle Tom isn't run very often. Yeah. And there's a reason. Um, the Italian version was so racist and, uh, and shocking that in order to get it released in America, they had to refilm half the movie uh, just to take out the stuff that was offensive. And both versions are on this, uh, this DVD. And I, uh, if you want to just see something amazing, not necessarily good, mind you, but, or, or positive, but amazing, this thing is something. Um, Anyway, uh, the, the guys who made this picture were Gualtiero Giacopetti, Franco Prosperi, and a guy named Paolo Cavara. Uh, and Cavara later made a dramatic picture about people who make Mondo movies called The Wild Eye, uh, which is a pretty interesting movie. And I, it, 
It may or may not be one of the trailers that I brought. I don't know. I'm not.